something double digit thousands back. <laughs> this size because I dieted for 20 years. I gave up dieting because it was a loser game for me. It made me fatter. It made me incredibly unhealthy. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. Oh my, 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 my. Come to the dark. today to talk to you about a very powerful little word, one that people will do almost anything to avoid becoming. I'm not sure if any of you have noticed, but I'm fat. Let's not sugarcoat it. I am the capital F-A-T kind of fat. I am the elephant in the room. Well, duh. When I walked out on stage, some of you may have been thinking, oh, this is going to be hilarious, because everybody knows that fat people are funny. <laughs> or you may have been thinking, where does she get her confidence from? Because a confident fat woman is almost unthinkable. These judgments are insidious. They can be directed at individuals and groups, and they can also be directed at ourselves. And this way of thinking is known as fat phobia. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriffsteil, das war ein Befehl! Like any form of systematic oppression, fat phobia is deeply rooted in complex structures like capitalism, patriarchy, and racism. We live in a culture where being fat is seen as being a lazy, greedy, unhealthy, irresponsible, and we tend to see thinness as being universally good, responsible, and in control of our appetites, bodies, and lives. We see these ideas again and again in the media, in public health policy, doctor's offices, in everyday conversations, and in our own attitudes. This anti-fat bias has become so integral, so ingrained to how we value ourselves and each other, that we rarely question why we have such contempt for people of size. And do we really want to live in a society where people are denied their basic humanity if they don't subscribe to some arbitrary form of acceptable? The real elephant in the room here is fat phobia. We can shift society's reluctance to embrace diversity and start to celebrate the myriad of ways there are to have a body. I think one of the prevailing things that are happening here is that what I'm hearing is this intense sort of discussion around self-hatred and when you're in a bigger body. And I wanted to ask people, like down the front there, you're, you who's 20, are you, is your life better? Are you happier? Is, is everything better now that you're slightly smaller than you were before? I mean, I think one of the things Well, that... let, let's get an answer to the question. Are you? Absolutely. And I'm not a little bit smaller. I'm a lot smaller. And I did, I did do research into everything. I can still have kids and... That may not have happened if I had stayed the size I was. Like, my question to you is, can you honestly say that you are 100% happy and healthy? Like, you have no medical conditions whatsoever. You have no problems at all with your health like at your okay, weight we as answer? compared to... Can we have an answer? No, no, no. Let's, the question's been asked. What's the answer? Um, I think it's really interesting that I feel like I need to justify my existence in this room. No, but right hang on now. a minute. You asked her to justify her decision. I She's asked if she asking... was happy. I didn't ask yeah, her to justify yeah. what her health issues now or if there is any. But have you got any health issues? No, I'm perfectly and happy. I'd love to know, like, what do you see as healthy with eating? Um, yeah, it's so interesting that you've just assumed food. that I eat bad food because no, of my No, I'd size. love to know, because if you're really healthy, do you have any joint issues or so you're completely... I swim two and a half kilometres a day. 
I walk, uh, I exercise all the time, I uh, am in a, a synchronised swimming team and I really resent the fact that I have to actually justify my existence and my ability to live in the world in a bigger body in but a way that I'm But we're all talking with. about health tonight. I mean, the well, whole show the, is about is about weight and health. No, so it's not talking about reasonable... surgery and we haven't actually talked about the possibility that you can actually live in, a li in your life no, but we in have. this body. We have talked about that. But I, all I'm saying is that a question to anyone about what they eat in the context of this program, mm. anyone in this room is perfectly reasonable, mm. I think. If well, you can but it's interesting that they've only been directed at fat people. No, 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 it's not about being fat or not being well, fat, no, it's about what everybody eats. What shows, yeah. Well, it's asked. about what everybody eats and what mm. health is, and, what health you're and conflating that our, and, our, and No, I'm asking, no, 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 I'm not conflating anything. I'm saying I think it's perfectly reasonable in the context of a discussion where you've got research that suggests that people who are overweight and people who are obese can be more prone to particular health problems, I think it's quite reasonable. To me, it's almost like reverting back to the civil rights movement. Now we're telling fat folks that they have to buy an extra seat. Not too long ago, my grandparents had to sit on the back of a bus. It's like, it's almost like segregating folks based on the way Where, they look. I, I can't imagine, did you're you really a, say that? Calm I, down. I, Don't act like you're, you, you, you're <laughs> offended by KKK? You're, you're, I, I mean, you're so offended by me saying that your approach is so tough. Why do you keep acting like tough? a victim, though? That's I, where I, I like I, to know. I, 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 may I, in the case, no, you, first of all, you know, let it, me... Well, I don't think we can let something about the KKK just sit there. I find that so incredibly offensive and, and offensive to the people who at the hands of that despicable organization have suffered. You are coming from a totally different place than Jillian Why is coming from. Why would you project something like that on Because today? you're projecting it on it. If it is what it is, I would respect you so much more. Say what it is. You have a problem with fat people. I would respect you so much more if you said, look, fatty, I can't stand you. I hate you. I Get the weight off. No, I understand you're passionate about this. You know, this is a picture of you with your grandmother. And you obviously... I obviously hate her, don't I? Just hate her. Yeah. Hate my mom, hate my dad. Why could you say something like that? You know nothing about me other than the propaganda. You know nothing May about I finish me. one statement? You know nothing I about me. I haven't gotten me. to finish one statement. If you read my blog, if you go to actionagainstobesity.com, if you go to findingfin.com, you'll find out what I really am. And then if you want to criticize me, criticize me. Don't criticize me based on what the pro-fat movement writes about me. I, I, I wouldn't like that website. person either. I did, I did go to your website. If you say, but don't say if that I, I hate a certain group of people when Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I have two, one, two comments to make. First, I want to direct this to Miss Skinny Minnie. Um, which which, which Miss Skinny Minnie? Um, isn't her name Mimi or Skinny Minnie? Yeah, okay, Minnie? Mimi. Well, the skinniest girl up there. Anyways, um, she made a comment that you have to have a lot of willingness and motivation I to be skinny. I was quoting Dr. Kelly Brownell of Yale. That's what he said. I don't care who, who you was quoting. You said it, own it. I agree with him, okay. absolutely. Okay, good. But... I'm a plus size model. I am willing and motivated to wake up every day to keep these curves. I don't want to wake up and look like you and be confused and quoting everybody. Why don't you say what you have to say and stand up for what you believe? Oh, I was just tagging on to she was talking about the same Yale Center. So, okay, okay but let me let me ask you a question while you're standing up. Why is it okay for you to call her skinny mini? <laughs> But it's not okay for her to comment about someone's size that's that's larger. Well, <laughs> I don't know her name. So, okay, you got me on that, but moving on. No chubbies. <clears throat> no chubbies. No, I got no, 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 no chubbies. No, 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 you said it. Own it. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is that she insulted when she was called skinny. Okay. It's skinny. I
we brought together four outspoken people to debate that question. Is it actually okay to be fat? There are 10 million females, a million males, who suffer from eating disorders in this country. There are really heartbreaking statistics about self-esteem. I think the most important thing that we can uh, give to a child is, is a love for their body. And having cake and ice cream at someone's birthday party isn't why America's fat. It's acting like every day is somebody's birthday party is why America is fat. But what about when you start to go the other way and you say, oh my God, food, let's be so scared now. That's such a bad thing. I think that's also planting, you know, the anorexic seed possibly from the beginning in children's minds. I mean, I started out as a, as a kind of chubby kid and increase through all of these behaviors. I am this size because I dieted for 20 years. Well, dieting when doesn't got, get you to it, that size. It does, actually. So when you go through the cycle of weight gain and re-loss and gain and loss and right. gain and loss, you do wind up at this size. I, I, I know, would I never did. Be, yeah, I was bigger than you. I would lot. never be a I thin person. I couldn't have sat here. I would never be a thin person. I was not before my dieting behaviors began. But you're not That's answering my question. question. She's saying that you've I'm given saying up. That it's, no, it's not about giving up is the thing. Like, I gave up dieting because it was a loser game for me. It made me fatter. It made me incredibly unhealthy. It made me full of self-loathing. You know, I've, I have permanently screwed up my metabolism because I dieted from the age 7 to the age Are 20. you sure about that? I do agree that there is stigma that I have to deal with because I am fat, but I'm, I'm actually really in celebration of my body. I find beauty and diversity. I think we come in all shapes and sizes. And the assumption that we've dealt with a lot on this show is that just because you're obese, you must overeat. You must have an eating disorder. I know that not to be the case. I know you can have a healthy relationship. Now, Mimi, you say this is misleading. Go have at it a little bit. Well, I certainly think that we all want to feel good about ourselves. That's understandable. Um, I don't think people should feel demeaned uh, by their size. And I also couldn't agree more with the message of daily exercise. No matter what size you are, you'll certainly benefit from daily exercise. You can't be healthy without that. Um, but then let's talk about where we disagree. Um, look, if you want to feel good about yourself, it's, it's impossible to feel good about yourself when you're doing something that's self-destructive. Also, self-destructive behaviors that result in damage or debilitation or even disfigurement to the body, that's never going to be perceived as beautiful. The, the thing is that uh, I think that the Hayes approach, the health at every size approach, has been documented to work. And it's been documented to work year after year. What do you mean work? What do you mean work? Because a health at every size is a lie. If you starve yourself no. into damage, that's unhealthy. Or if you eat yourself into damage, that's not assumptions. healthy. You're making so, a lot of assumptions. Um, that's just not. Here, that's not true. You're making that's a like lot of saying, assumptions. That's like saying about that weight let's being say you were a smoker. Let's say you're a smoker and have black lungs and you try to say that's healthy because you don't have cancer yet. We know that the, the, it is actually factual that obesity is dangerous and it's connected to cancer, stroke, Alzheimer's. We even know it's connected to a, an increase in birth defects. So there's nothing left to debate. Maybe. It's not beautiful. It's not healthy. <laughs>